now heading for uh, the uh, one of the high points on Tarnagan Ridge here now. Even the footage of the ball come up to like four meters away. Big length, big tines, big massive ball. Like deja vu for us. Just a nice thing. Just pops on top. Yeah. <laughs> oh, here we go. We're back into it. Uh, we've got another chopper load coming. We've got a bit of gear and uh, the other party, and then we're, uh, we'll set up a camp and make a bit of a plan. But yeah, that's pretty exciting. It is seriously like deja vu. Exactly this time last year we were in here. Fingers crossed, no COVID this time. Well, we've got a uh, base camp set up in a bit of a hurry. We're just going to head down to the, uh, the boat launching spot. Blake and knots are down there already, pumping the boat up. But yeah, we're just stooging across this big clearing here where uh, yeah, it went a bit crazy for us on that on that last night with the big old stack um, uh, charging out. That's pretty cool to see us all again. Um, but yeah, pretty exciting forecast we've got. At least five, maybe six really good clear days ahead of us, so we're heading for the tops. Getting stuck in round two, version two. Point oh. She's, She's juicy. A, She's a frilly one. Or frilly knickers. Alright, we've got an HMS big dog down here blowing up, ready for uh, the big crossing, but we might as well start the trip like normal. Hooking. Sorry. No, yeah. Leave me hanging. <laughs> Hey, hey, hey. Mm -hmm. So um, on this trip we have the same four from last year, me, Clay, Blake and Noughts and we're sharing the block with... <coughs> <laughs> Don't breathe in. Sharing the block with the Maven lads, Angus, Connor's last yeah, name? Connor Hobbs. Connor Hobbs. And Richard. How's that muscle mate? Probably outstanding mate. Can you hear those 50 inches? Outstanding. Yeah. <laughs> Good one. I'll we, go might, the round. we might as well polish them off. Mm. <laughs> so, um, oh, yeah, that's, 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 plan this time the same as last time. Across the main natives, up onto Tarnagam and along. So, um, we'll, we'll split up with the other boys up there somewhere and uh, get stuck into it. But yeah, as I said, some good weather. <coughs> some good weather um, ahead of us. So, yeah, awesome. Looking forward to it. Pretty exciting. We've uh, heard a bugler already up um, up the river, so it's a good sign. Having a good slug up the steep stuff. We're about probably not even an eighth of the way. We've almost been going an hour, so pretty good grunt. Feeling the feeling the burn. Oh. 
about three hours in now. <clears throat> Touch over halfway, so it's a bit of a grunt to go. Sweetie stuff. Really warm, hardly any breeze. I've just broken the tops now. So we're now heading for uh, the uh, one of the high points on Tarnagan Ridge here now. Um, but all these years we've gained a bit of altitude now. The main wild natives carries on around to the right there. That gully you can see out there is the Burna Burn, and that's what oh, it's got all sorts of names. That one, the North Branch, and a few other names. But yeah, main natives is just down here. So what a stunning fjord today. Heading for the 1300 high point up there. Oh, we just um, left the Maven boys down there, and we've uh, got a few hundred meters from them. We spotted a big doozy bull just down in the bushes here. So we put the boys onto it and they're um, sussing about now. He's just laying down. Got a wee bit of footage, I don't know how good it is, but very whoppity type looking thing. We finally found somewhere we're going to camp. It's a good turn. Just back over there. We're having a bit of a classing session now. <coughs> this is the Tarnigan Ridge all the way along here. There's cows and all sorts on that side. I haven't seen anything on this side yet, but that's the wild natives right there. Bloody cool. Can't see a cloud in the sky either. Oh, well, she's been a bloody big day. Our oh, GoPro footage came to an abrupt end when I videoed 40 minutes of inside my pocket. Uh, it doesn't make very good footage, but it killed the battery. The videos are long enough and boring enough without that. But, um,. Been a massive day, we've got camp set up now. We're just tucking into a bit of a feed. We've climbed be almost 1300 meters elevation. Yeah. 1248, are we? 1248, yeah, we've been up, come back down again. Mm. Yeah, so been a big climb basically from, from sea level where we got dropped off. So, don't know if you can hear that. We got dropped off this <laughs> We got dropped off this morning, but we've got a couple of buglers just going hard, about a few hundred meters from camp, but we don't want to stir them up too much because they don't want to come over here in the dark. But yeah, it's been a big day. So we're currently on the end of Tarnigan Ridge. Seen quite a few animals, heard a lot of animals, so they're bugging really well. Um, but yeah, been a good day. So tomorrow's going to be interesting. More fine weather. Back into it. Oh, if we can do a nice, fresh, crispy morning. Hardly a cloud in the sky, and we've got. We've had a bull bugling just over here all night. Haven't even laid eyes on him yet. But yeah, it's a pretty rough sleep actually. We all had a bit of a rough one, but we're just up having some bricky now and then go for a look. Bloody good. You watch this, it's bloody cool. He's not, how long is he though? Oh, he's pretty big. Well, look at this, yeah, they say that the skull not. He's not above 45, is he? Is there anything in here now? Yeah. Look, I think I might have bought a thing over here. Set it up again. We're sitting along the Tarnagan Ridge now. For those big big tops up there. Let's cruise glass that way. Yeah, see so what we come across. It's pretty epic country. <laughs> so we're just um getting up to the main ridge now, I'm gonna stop for some lunch, but we've just been filming that absolute stunning ball. Far out he's good. Hey um we're thinking he's probably 16 points, five on each top, and then he's got a little bottom tines, and um, got everything going, but 
Does he need one more year? Two more years? That's really hard to know. But shit, he's a ripple right out in the open. Right, North? I could, Yeah, good. It's quite warm, mate. We'll just stop for some lunch now. Um, so, Greg Dooley was camped up on that high point there, and now he's coming down to probably have a yarn with us. Um, that, that real nice ball was over in here, but he's sort of pushed his cows up out of that basin. So our plan from here after lunch is up into the tops, along here, and then we'll probably camp down on that next low, low piece on the ridge. Yeah, stunning weather. Oh, well, we've got had a hot, sweaty climb today. She's very warm, but we're right up on top now. We're right on the boundary of um, Glasnock and the natives. But we're looking down the Glasnock. Here is right down the Glasnock. There's the oilskin pass there, and the head of the uh, head of the pits just in there. And then you can see the main Edith Valley just over the top there with um, Edith Pass over there as well. But this is epic. This is such cool country. I went down into there, but on the midget, so. So we sort of sidled back round and we're just back into our block now. So that's the main head of the natives out there. This is that big catcher that um old Emil Dooley shot his ball and they got it up in there, that winter ball they got on the their TV show. So that's pretty cool, he was in amongst those rocks here. And they stooge down there and shot him off the end. So still cool, so we're hoping to just get a wee bit further up here. Maybe set up a camp and then we're gonna glass all this for tonight. It's really cool to come through these areas. I was just talking about Emil's bull over the other side there and just up on the other side is where um, Richie Williams shot his big bull a few years ago. He was a ripper too. It's such gnarly steep country but so much scope. You may have, uh, may, have, may have noticed too that my hat's slightly different on this trip. It's usually the same colour, a uh, different logo on the front but I see uh, turned up to the briefing this time and they Foundation boys are selling some gear that they're trying to make, raise a bit of money, so um, I quite like the orange hat with the black logo on the front, stands out in the hills and your mates can see you and yeah, they're really cool actually, so make sure you spend 25 bucks and get yourself one, really cool hat. There's a bit of cloud piling in now, I really hope that it doesn't run out evening, the evening glass. We found a good flat spot here for camp. We're probably going to camp half past four. We're going to set our camp up. We've got no water here, so we're going to head down the ridge here with the glassing gear and some water bottles and have dinner down there and do some glassing until dark. But it's a good campsite, sort of up out of the way of these gullies and stuff. So we'll set up a camp now. We'll queue to a epic as time lapse of setting tents up and clouds moving by. Bugger us for most of the night, but 
Shit, what a stunner of an evening it is. That cloud kept pushing up from the sea and sort of filling our gullies up behind us, but the bulls will open up for a wee bit, so it's still pretty exciting. But yeah, look at that. Magic. Welcome to a uh, bloody windy, windy morning, and most of our gullies are all sucked in. Tarnagan Ridge, basically right on the end of my finger is where we camped on the first night and you can't quite see but we climbed up from that backside there where we did that 1300 meter climb from sea level up the backside of that and then sort of came round and then camped in there and then yesterday we sort of stooged our way along here it actually looks easy going for fjord and standards but there's lots of rock jumbles and shit you're up and down and around and all sorts so yeah, and then we sort of came up the high point you can see oh it's just there to there and then we came up around the back of this and then we camped down behind us but the side of the valley is stunning but right behind us is blowing a gale and all the clouds pouring and you can see it sort of coming around and disappearing but that, that bull's still asleep down here can't see anything else thought it might have been a pick some animals up in here but haven't done but that's right well, we're doing quite a bit of looking over this ball he's actually um he's actually sound asleep in the tussock he'll probably stay there a wee while he's having a good snooze he might he sticks his head up every now and then has a has a roar but he's actually really hard hard one to judge age on um because looking at his pedicles are right down really hard and got plenty of footage in that to show that um, but then his body characteristics sort of show a a sort of a leaner younger stag and so it was um you know what he's doing he's right up on a ridge bugling it's about nine o'clock in the morning mm, he's just not acting like an old stag he's got no cows or anything with him but yeah you know things big heavy beams too really hard to tell really hard to tell but yeah, let's just put him at that middle age and leave him be i suppose put him at a buddy four or five year old He's not what we've came for, not what I've come for, so if I'm going to carry a head out of here, he's going to be a bit bigger than that. Because he's just a big old slug out of here. Oh, 
legs come up towards the 200 meters. There's another one below I'm bugling to. But I'm hoping Blake's somewhere relatively close now. I can't see him. But he's been gone a while. What's the old Uchi Mama out calling? He's brought him right up this close. Just um, got Blake seen. Don't know how close Blake got, but got Blake seen and bolted all the way down several hundred meters, and then stopped at a wallow, roared at the wallow, jumped in the wallow, rolled around, and then took off again. <laughs> awesome. No, well, we didn't get to see the other bull that was bugling, but hopefully Blakey got in and got some photos before he got smelt. Bloody good fun. Oh, what you got there, Clinchy? A little bit of smoked paprika tuna. Thanks to the old sponsors, Rolling Meadow. She had us a half kilo of cheese, so it's been um, yeah, a big help on this trip. What about your Uli? Oh, you don't have to get high. Fines, I had to pay for that. Did you? Yeah. So. Should we hit them up? Yeah, I'll ask them. I'll talk to them about that. That looks good though, mate. Oh, well, we've been in camp now. We're just going to ride out maybe two or three hours in the middle of the day hide from the wind and have some snacks Nort's is still down the ridge here he's probably gonna have a sleep in the sun down there and do a bit of glass in between naps but um yeah it was cool that action with that ball this morning unfortunately winded um blake a little bit early but uh, still good fun got some good footage Oh well, that was a uh, a pretty frustrating day to be honest. Oh no, we had a bit of fun this morning with that bull. Um, but other than that, she's just been windy, windy all afternoon. Uh, made for hard glassing. Couldn't even hold the bino still at times, and then the spider was a waste of time. But we still saw, uh, I don't know, a dozen animals um, in the gully here beside us. Mostly cows and young bulls. But yeah, it was pretty frustrating trying to do much spotting on those. But yeah, we. Head down the ridge down that way tomorrow morning and then I'll make a plan from down there. Oh, we've had a bit of a uh, frustrating morning. We got it real early and packed the tents up in the dark with the intention of heading back down the ridge to our glassing spot from last night to glass first light. But we got up, everything was clear, clear as, and then within 20 minutes, this shit just pushed straight up the valley, straight into all the head basin into the valleys we wanted to glass. So. Yeah, at the moment we're just sitting next to a tarn off our ridge, hoping it might clear, I don't know if it is, but I don't think there's any point in going down the end of that ridge and sending it all up, if we can't see anything. 
Oh, you can see the clouds stuffed us for our morning glassing. Looks amazing, makes some pretty bloody time lapse videos, but absolutely ruins our hunting. It's a real shame. I've seen a young 10 point bull come around this face here and they've dropped down here. And then there's been a couple of spikers over here and some cows and stuff down in here. But we really wanted to get to that, that far knob there and glass down into all this good country down in here. But there's no point going down there if the clouds there would just end up winding it up. So I think we're going to end up having a, a day up in the tussock up here and just park up and chill out for a bit. Maybe go down there tonight. I'd say we'll stay another night on this ridge. It's, really, it's funny we've only come sort of 200 metres from where we were camped last night, but it's safe to play it that way rather than ruining all the good country. Yeah. yeah, what is it? The Spectre of the Brocken. Yeah. I mean, it means you're uh, Real high. really high. Real high. Really high. <laughs> We've had a pretty long, um, I guess, miserable day up here in the clag. She's been clagged in completely pretty well all the day, but it is now half past four and it looks like it's starting to clear because we can see the tops up there and we haven't seen them all day. Blake thinks the blue cotter bite him. Oh well, that cloud didn't clear like we thought it might, so um, we've now loaded all our gear back up. We're going to go find another camp, so it's starting to get cold too. About 6 o'clock now, we've actually waited all day for the fog to clear and it hasn't, so if anything, it's probably only gotten worse. So we need down the ridge a bit further and find the next flatter spot and camp there for the night. Hope you try and not wind up all this country out here. Frustrating, frustrating. Well, camp set up, been a very, very uneventful day four. Yeah, day four. A lot of sleeping in the tussock. Um, yeah, this cloud's been a pain, so we'll sit in here for the night and hopefully we have a different bunch of weather tomorrow. Then we got our lookout point just down there, so. Yeah, we'll see what the uh, morning brings. Another slow start this morning. It's getting a bit tough this weather. The forecast says it's fine, but we're stuck in the clag again, so we've yeah, been a bit slow getting out of the tents. About 8 30 now. It may actually burn off, but we'll see. It's a bit frustrating. So, the plan is we're going to load up our packs down the ridge, drop down into the bush, and uh, get up to the tops. A bit tough. Up camp, we had a um, bit of a clearance in the weather. So I've, just, I've just shot down off the edge there from camp and um, had a look at all this stuff here. It's all amazing country, but there's no new animals. There's um, half a dozen cows over there by that wallow and then a couple of smaller stags all around them. We just dropped. We come straight down this face here. It doesn't look like shit in the GoPro, but we heard a ball bugling below me, and, and old Khan thought it was on our side, and Blake claimed it was on the other side, but kept his mouth shut. <laughs> Turns out it was on the other side, but we've just come down this steep stuff, and we're now going to try and sidle our way back up through here, back up onto the top. Don't know if you can see, but Clay sitting way up on the top up there waiting for us. How's the order, Nuts? Yes. Steep. Steep. Um, it's, it's very enjoyable. <laughs> this is Fjordland. On the steep stuff. Go. 
quickly. Three. Ten seconds. Three. Oh, he's going to get straight over there. Hello. Oh, well, that um, marks day five of our trip. We're halfway through. Um, don't know how much you can see, but we're standing right at the head of the natives. Done five days in the tops. We're just about to drop down into the bush. It sounds like there's plenty of action happening down there. Um, but yeah, it's been good fun. We've been battling the cloud and the clag and the shit. But yeah, we're going to have a bit of fun in the bush. Awesome. Oh, lucky you didn't do that with your pack on. No. Fuck, is it a trophy? That's what we're after. Woo! It's about 60 inches. What do you reckon? 16, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is it? Is it a red? A no, nah, it's moose, isn't it? Moose? Have a chew on it. Oh shit, that was a crazy turn of event. Didn't have my GoPro on me because I ditched the pack, but we, um, we're dropping down towards the bush and now Blakey spotted a couple of cows on the bush edge. So we thought we'd sneak in and ditch the packs and try and get in for some photos and maybe do a roar or a squeak and see if there's a bull around. But as we got closer, I spotted a bull and then we snuck in, snuck in, gave a couple of squeaks and they got Hoochie Mama and he eventually started roaring and came out and uh, yeah looks like he's a big old bull we've got plenty of footage of him plenty of footage of him roaring and then uh, yeah Nort's looked him through the spotter made the call sacked him yeah he's a long 10 and looks like he's got plenty of age uh, yeah shit that was cool just sitting there watching him bugle and all sorts he's only gone down because you wouldn't play shoot him <laughs> Fucking mean. <laughs> the size of a peedy. 
Hey? What beady? What beady? Let's just shake the punch. Stinky what beady. Yeah. Oh, oh well, how cool is that? We sat and watched this bull for a long time, watched him bugle. And now he's on the deck. Be look at those coronets. That down solid. There's not a lot of room left there. Flat, eh? Yeah. That's all you're after, eh? That's what we can ask for. Plenty of age. Look at this back tone. Oh. She's been uh, probably tough few down some days on the top, isn't it? Um, pretty foggy. We haven't seen many animals in the head. We were basically based our trip on getting to the head and um, finding all these animals that we'd, we'd heard about and seen. And, um, so we. Yeah, we've sort of seen a few nice animals and a bit of action in that, but uh, yeah, it wasn't until getting on today we stumbled upon, upon this fella. You know, Blake managed to spot some cows as we came down a steep face, and um, yeah, this old boy was with them, so um, I could kind of see how good he looked and how old he looked, and kind of screaming at Khan to shoot him, but <laughs> Khan's got, um, got his figure in mind, so. Um, shit, I'll, I'll yeah, very gratefully take him. Bloody cool, man. Yeah. So we looked at how, how low his coronets were. Well, Norts and I were sort of sitting about 100 metres apart. Your hand signals. We stalked down, so we were trying to communicate via hand signals. And um, yeah, we looked at things like the size of his body and his ass and that sort of thing. And then his coronets are hard down. And he's got a big woolly forehead on him and showed all the characteristics. So Nort put a, Nort's put a pill in him. Unfortunately, he fell about 20 metres to this bush here, but... At least he stopped. Yep. Bloody cool. Mid-40s, 10-pointer. Bloody crazy. Ooh, tough. What do you reckon? I'd like to say more than seven. Yeah. Eight. We'll find out. That. What's that there, mate? I'll tell it. Neck steak. The finger neck steak. <laughs> Fuck, it's big, eh? Oh, we started the bloody the bash down. It's about uh, six again. No, it's his toast already. This is what Wobbity Hunting's about. Yeah. We're just trying to find somewhere flat and dry to camp here. Really. It's flatty, flat and swampy at the moment, so bulls are still be good in there. Oh well, we've got a camp set up. We found a dry spot. It's quite cool. We've got animals bugling all around us. <laughs> a bull just over there racking up some bushes got him on the phone scope yeah. and there's all sorts going on in the heat over here there's also two tosses from the upper glass not plot that decided that they want to uh, go into the wild natives and they're dropping down this ridge over here into our block I mean because I don't know why they just can't stay in their own block all they're doing is dropping their scent straight down into our gully where we want to hunt tomorrow freaking tosses because they're just sitting there glass and all this stuff over here it's real cool, we're just teasing this young bull like right here. He's just there. Well, it brings us to an end of a uh, pretty fruitful and exciting day. It all happened pretty quickly when uh, we got onto Nortz's bull and took that up. And now we dropped oh, probably three, four hundred metres below where that happened and camped in a big swampy area on top of some rocks. But we're sort of in the head of the 
the natives smashing some dinner. If you're going dee high, this is the only way to go, I reckon. It is good. Yep. Sometimes you just need to go dee high to go lightweight. Choice. Oh well. Tomorrow morning we're going to bash down to the river and have a go at some um, buglers up close. We're good fun. Oh well, it's day six. Pretty calm night actually. Just smashing some bricky. But um, plan is to just drop straight off this ridge here and down into the main valley. It looks like it's going to be a real shitty go. Just real tight scrubbing, quite steep. But better get, you've got to get down there and then we're just going to have a bit of fun with some bush balls. Whoever's in. Obviously, it made it as far as we planned yesterday just because um, Mortz's bull got us up a bit, but that's all good. That's what we're here for. So, we've got a bit of bush bashing to go today. Hopefully, we're going to make it all the way down to the uh, the junction of the Burner Burn and camp there tonight. Big day. Cool thing we've mentioned, we're just sort of setting off from our camp now. Um, it's quite muddy. Um, Blake and Nortz heard a cover up here of Kiwi last night when they were in the tent. Um, both the male and female started calling out to each other, so that's really cool. They'd be in the middle of nowhere like this and hear some Kiwi, so we've uh, recorded that on the app. But yeah, bloody awesome. Just magical in here. Not looking forward to today though. Yeah. 
save now. Got some sick footage. I didn't even turn it on. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, he was so close. Fuck, I got nothing. I couldn't see you. You're in the worst spot. Yeah. Fuck. Oh, shit, man. I think there was the same one I saw on the blue last night, eh? Yeah. He's the one that's been active, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. It was even the footage where the ball came up to like four meters away. So he had big, big length, big tines, big massive ball. I judged him at being old. Got a pill in him. <laughs> Fucking hell. That's what it's all about. That is such fun. That went zero to 200 in about two seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I nearly skidded my undies too. Yeah, sitting here watching me. I was standing where I hit him. There's blood everywhere. Yeah, there he is. There he is. That's insane. <laughs> He's <laughs> Fuck, look at him. Oh, he's at 11 or 12, is he? Yeah, I think he had another top. Fuck, man. Man. Oh. Oh, wow. Oh, well, we're going to leave a bit of gear here with him. Go back and get all the packs and the other camera lenses and stuff and come back. Get a bit of a photo session going. Awesome. looking spot so we could kind of see the mob of cows out on last night near this guy bugling from so it's bloody cool oh, compulsory photo session oh we're just leaving the lake the next few hours are going to be quite hellish I'd say so I'm probably not going to talk to you but yeah we're just going to keep going down till we find somewhere to camp might do a bit of bugling on the way. We'll see how we go. Epic bit of fun. We were smashing through the bush and a, uh, a bull was bugling. We could hear him in the distance, so we kept closing the gap. And it was actually one we heard from the tops way up there yesterday, the day before. And um, we got him bugling really well. And then went, we went quiet and just started walking towards him. Then all of a sudden he bugled and he was real close to us. So we just dumped all our gear and thought we'd stalk in on him. Um, but he ended up just coming into us and we only bloody went 10 meters from our packs and he came straight in at us, which was really cool. 
looked like a bloody crossbreed 10 pointer or something but awesome video and some uh, real awesome photos again so uh, yeah it's real exciting so we love this close action bush stuff it's real cool the day's not over yet Whew. good bath Pretty high, isn't it? He always gave you a new ring piece, Blakey. Jeepers. Did it get your leg? Oh, there you go. Here you go. There you go. Here you go. It's nothing like a date with uh, old um, Mary Ann deep in Fjordan. She's looking good, eh, lads? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep, yeah, she goes good. Smashing some electrolytes. Pretty sweaty work. I don't even think we've come a K and a half since uh, Kiwi Lake, so a long way to go yet. I've got another bugler, so I've just dropped back. We're sneaking in. No! <laughs> Do I just think they're doing a big or is it quite big as well? Like he was big here. Yeah, yeah. Chest big Nico. Yeah. Oh, it was cool. Again, we had another stag come into like six metres. Um, we may, may have some footage, we may not. It was quite tight and the old autofocus was grabbing everything else but the deer, but Blake got some stunning photos. Yeah, look at that. That's bloody cool. So you got some stunning photos and, um, but yeah, good fun again. Good way to break up the grind trying to get out of this valley. Awesome. Me. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Oh. 
What about that? That was sick. <laughs> That was fucking crazy. Silly young stag, I'd roared back on the slip back you know, 100 metres away. And I assume he was walking on that because we were just walking onto the bush and Blake stopped us and the stupid young stag. <laughs> he came up to us, spook a little bit, come at a different angle, spook a little bit, come at a different angle again. Another 5 metres from us, eh? Hey? <laughs> <laughs> it was fucking insane. Man, that's cool. Get some good photos too. You got some good photos in video. Yeah. Do you get that little... Whoa. I did, but it's just going in and out of focus. Oh, yeah. Clay, you got some good stuff too, eh? Only once you came around the top? Yeah. Oh well it's about bloody half past six now and we've broken out on a clearing that's relatively flat enough to camp on. We're all absolutely cooked to be honest. It's been a big day, been almost going 12 hours. But yeah, we're going to try and set up a bit of a camp here. I'm just drenched, we're all just drenched in sweat, it's just soaking wet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, she's been a hard but fun day. Fun because we're just... Had so many cool stag encounters, so get a camp set up and then settle in for the night. Very hungry. Well, that wraps up day six. Uh, we're just about to hit the scratcher now. Been a bloody fun day though. Uh, it's been hard work, big slog. Uh, but we've had quite a few stag encounters, I think five in total, including my big ball that I shot. Um, but all five of those stags came to within easily within 10 meters of us some of them were even closer it was um pretty exciting so you'll see from some of the photos and the footage that those stags are real close one was actually that close and he licked his lips i heard him licking his lips <laughs> that was pretty funny uh, but yeah all in all good day yeah, another big day tomorrow we're gonna push on down to base camp because we've got some weather coming a bit of rain and some strong winds so we'll uh we'll get back to base camp pretty good Oh, well, she's pack up on day seven. Um, definitely a big change in the weather. It's really warm and it's blowing northerly at the moment. Not blowing too hard down here, but it looks like we'll be screaming in the tops by the way the clouds are going. Um, yeah, so we're having a quick pack up. It's meant to rain by about lunchtime. And then, uh, yeah, we're heading back for base camp today. So, just going to be a bit much of what we did yesterday. Bit of bush bashing. Hopefully, we might run into a couple of stags. But we'll, um, here we go along the way. the uh, confluence of the, the Boona Boon flows out here and the wild native flows out there so it's quite a cool spot on the map that I've looked at several times but um, looking at the flow of the Boona Boon there's a lot more water in that than, the water, than what there is in the wild natives. We're pretty lucky to have uh, had basically six or seven days of no rain at all so the rivers are probably at their lowest at the moment. Um, yeah, cause crossing would be a wee bit more interesting if there'd been some flow. But yeah, another cool spot to take off and uh, we'll carry on down the valley. Just coming to a clearing where, where Blake brought one into last year. I just had a reply already, so it come out anywhere. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
Oh, that's pretty exciting. We had a uh, red stag come within oh, maybe 60 meters, maybe a bit closer. Uh, but our wind was all shit, and he ended up hitting our wind. And then we had an issue with bloody flat camera batteries and all sorts. So don't know how much footage we got, but Blake would have got some photos anyway. So pretty cool. That's pretty exciting. He came to within 15 meters. He's actually still roaring. Blake and Clay have shot up to try and get more footage. But... Mm -hmm. He's trying to cut around and get our wind.
Oh well, there was another cool wind stag encounter. We must be up to bloody ten different stags between uh, since we've been in the valley floor. It's been bloody good fun, but we're about 400 meters from the boat now, and uh, then we'll be back across the river. So she's gone down a bit, eh? Oh, well, we've just made it back to the boat. Bodies are absolutely poked. Just retrieving it from down from out of the tree. Put it up there to stop stags poking holes in it. Because the rain was never going to come up. But in speaking about rain, it's just started raining. So as predicted just after lunch, we were going to get our first uh, bit of rain. And here it is. So yeah, she's looking pretty angry up in the sky. We'll get across the river and get back to the camp. Woo! Got a good system here. Horns for days. Big dog. The Zepak. Bloody cool. Rain's just settling in. Pull the bloody rope, mate. He wants to stop for a photo. He's leaving me out here stranded. Same flies, bro. What are you be with? Oh, this is the best feeling in the world. Yep. Get rid of that. Beautiful. Well done, Nott. Good shit, man. Mean, bro. Yeah, good shit. Good shit. Yes. Boom. Made it. Made it. I'm buggered. We should be sitting in camp. Eating some mussels. Some bulls walked out on a clearing just up here. Bugling away. Have a look. No.
actually hard to fathom how bloody cool that was. We were just sitting in the tent yarning and then we heard a quite a hearty bugle relatively close and we thought, oh, yeah, I suppose we better put the wet clothes back on and climb back out there. I'm actually wearing my wet boots with no socks at the moment and Blake's got fucking gum boots on. <laughs> but it was totally worth it. That young bull just didn't want to leave his cow. But oh man, so much fun. That's what I love about fjordin. Anything can happen, eh? Sweet. Get a barrel chaser. You, ch you need to chase whiskey with double brown. <laughs> the thing you got into the head to get the airdrop, which they dropped in, which looked easy from the air. Yeah. And then they dropped down, stayed in a rock movie, and then the, for a day or so, and then they decided like, oh, we'll just pop out. How fucking hard was it dropping from like the lake, the unknown lake, yeah. down to there? But mm. where they just popped out of there, and then they've gone to Orskin Pass. But it, it doesn't say which way they come back. Well, the um, rain settled for a wee bit, so I've just grabbed a bit of gear. Yeah. Just gonna head out for Mosey. Yeah, it seems to have gone quiet from what they were doing last night. So last night was fucking May and you know, shitloads. Probably about five, six stags going all around camp. There's three in the middle of this clearing here. That's just nuts. But mostly reds, aren't they? So, you know what, we'll basically have a bit of fun. So Blakey's mission today, <laughs> while I was off hunting and uh, North Sinclair were relaxing, his uh, mission today was to get a few blue cod. What do you got there? Hold that big moocher up. Not a bad blue cod. Yeah, I bet he put up a fight on that little wee rod. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so it's quite a wee bash down to the, uh, the coast from here. Um, and then where the wild natives goes out, it's quite a big sand bank, so Blake had to bash quite a wee way, wee way around the coast to um, get into some blue cod waters by the sounds of it. He'd taken the old inflatable down there, but the uh, the chop was, wasn't much good. So he caught these buggers off the uh, off the ocean with um, with the old soft baits on the trout rod. Pretty cool, blue cod for dinner. Yeah, they're beautiful. Oh, blue cod, blue cod. Oh, oh yeah. Bit of really salted uh, cheddar, which is the better. This is a good idea. We've got to our um, last full day in Wapiti country. Had quite a lot of heavy rain last night. Um, not so I just going to go for a bit of a bush bash up into the um, what's known as the Pauline Dune. It's a big side branch that comes up here for camp. Um, big bush goat gully, it's got a, a pretty impressive head basin, but I don't think we'll get that far today on a day hunt. But either way, we'll go for a look. Stag's gone quite quiet, actually. in the Pauline Burn now and we haven't heard anything for ages or at all since we've been here and then we just heard a, a distant red stag roar so we thought we'd try and close the gap and as we're walking towards him he was walking towards us and then roared probably 50 metres away so we quickly had to dump back get the camera out and just get sorted and then next thing we know he was like oh, maybe seven or eight metres from us and just looking straight at us and roaring but I got a couple of quick photos of him but they're not that good but oh, still bloody good fun. Just these close encounters. He didn't want to hang around for very long either. Yeah, better find a big creamer. No. No. Oh well, we've just decided to um, turn around and head back for camp. We're uh, a bit wet and a bit dejected, but it's a bit of a uh, also a bit of a sad moment too because it's our last days, full days hunting, and uh, we're turning around, heading back. So 
that's basically the end of end of the hunting on our Wapiti trip. Uh, we've got probably about two k's back to camp through some real horrible, nasty crap. It's not a lot of fun, but anyway, that's all part of it. Um, she's been one hell of an adventure. But, um, no doubt we'll update when we get back. We may bump into something on the way back, but I, uh, I doubt it just based on the sign and stuff we've seen in here. But anyway, we'll, uh, we'll see how we go. That was insane. I'm about an hour from camp maybe, and I just sneak or sort of just walking through the old pep woods and looked up on this clearing in front of us and um, there was a, a bull standing there. And so I snuck up and I spent the last about 45 minutes lying in this little muddy gutter and behind this tree while this bull's been sitting out on this clearing out here. So he's been sitting out there after about 40 minutes or so, 45 minutes, I ended up giving a bit of a, I don't know, fawn call, cow call, I don't even know what it was. And he literally, I was sitting behind this tree, and he walked up to right there, about two metres from me, and holy shit. <laughs> that was insane honestly that was insane and he came in again to probably I don't know 7 metres 8 metres just out there a couple times and then he's just snuck off yeah. he's ended up cutting my wind behind me so he's bolted but what an insane experience I sat there for about half an hour because my bloody lens had fogged up so I couldn't get any photos or video, um, but managed to get a few crackers in the end, so over the moon, over the moon. Yeah. Yeah.
about 2 p.m. and um, just pushed up the river and climbed up a bit of a steep bit into where it sort of flattens out into some big open terraces. Um, so it's quite big, big and flat all up through here. Very soaking wet. Bumped a couple of animals on the way up, but I was just bashing through the bush, so never got eyes on them. Um, but yeah, there's a big clearing up a bit further, so got to get up around there, get the wind right, and come onto it. And who knows, we might even be able to roar a stag onto the clearing. Yeah. Yeah. I was literally sitting on that clearing back there and gave a roar and heard nothing for, for ages and then about 15 minutes later bugle in the distance and I'd heard him once before this afternoon so I said oh he was down river on the way home anyway I'll bash down towards him and see what I can find I was literally bashing through this shit wondering where the hell he was and then just gave a roar and within two seconds <laughs> About 20 metres away, this bloody pure bugle just let strip into the... I was like, Fuck, holy sh... Grabbed my bloody camera out of the case. All I had time for was to push record and he was already about 10 metres away. I was standing right where I am now. He came through, just behind this punga, about 2-3 metres away. Walked in here, behind this tree stump in here. And then started bugling behind there, so I muted him a couple times. He turned around came charging back, <laughs> he was looking me straight in the eye and I literally had to jump at him to make him bloody stop and you'll see in the video he, he sort of jolts a wee bit and he's still not sure and he runs off back up there gave a few more fawn calls then all of a sudden I see his antler about 15 metres away and he comes in again to about 4 or 5 metres and then he just charges off but holy shit I was literally just standing there shaking like this bloody thing better not bloody put his antlers down and flip me into a tree or something. But um, it was crazy. It's been so quiet all afternoon and to have that happen has just been like, <laughs> can't believe it eh. That was amazing. Oh, we've got a few hours back to camp anyway so I'll uh, let the old nerves settle and I'll <laughs> pack up my shit and start walking back to camp. Hopefully be back by about 7 o'clock tonight. Oh, we'll uh, get on the road anyway. Oh, well, I've just um, just come back from a uh, day hunt. I'm soaked through to the bone, um, but I thought it was a good opportunity. I'm getting mauled by sand too. But it was a good opportunity to talk about my bull. Um, haven't really touched on it yet, yet on this trip, but um, yeah, it's something I'm pretty proud of. Um, I think one thing we we take from all the uh, education from the, the Wapiti Foundation, those guys that are doing all the hard work um, around aging bulls and sizing bulls is most of the time when you're in the top, uh, when you do have a bit of time to look at them and, and, um, and study them and, and look over them and look at their, you know, their age and all that sort of thing and what makes their age and that sort of thing. But um, this guy here, as you would have seen in the video, um, I shot him in the bush and first encountered him about standing there about seven meters away when he came into my raw excuse the sand flies um and i stood there and looked at him looked him up and down he looked at me and then and i and let him bolt basically and um i decided that he needed further inspection um but he bolted and didn't didn't spook he had a lot of cows with him uh, managed to keep him interested with a few bugles uh, i didn't actually capture most of that action on the camera um we've got a lot of time i got 
quite a lot of time to look over him in the bush. Um, basically, he ran off first, and then I, I sort of moved through the bush quite quickly and caught up with him again and got another good look at him and um, got a good look at his, his antlers, um, which caught my eye, obviously, and then um, got a really good look over his body when he stood broadside from me about uh, 30 metres away in the bush, and his body showed all the characteristics of an old bull too. So I decided, yep, he's going on the deck. Um, and you put him down. You can tell by the colouring of his antlers, he's just been a bush bull, most of you know, uh, rubbed out, real dark stain. Um, but you know, I'm no, no professional at aging these things, and I'm not even going to try and guess an age. But um, you know, he's, he's pushing mid 40s long, he's got 21 inch trays and 18 inch brows, and just a beast of an animal. Um, got a massively long skull, too. Um, but yeah, I'm definitely put him as a mature bull, and I'm really, really happy about him. Yeah, something I'm stoked about and um, like I said um, all the foundation education is all about being able to have time in the tops and look over those animals whereas in the bush you just you just don't get that same opportunity and that's where we can come unstuck a little bit when it comes to um, knocking balls over you know they look huge from five meters away and we've had plenty of encounters on this trip uh, with animals that close so um, again you need to take that time look over that animal and uh, if you can Try and get a second and third look before you go and pull that trigger. Uh, but yeah, that's all I've really got to say on that. But I'm yeah really happy with this trip and this animal. So start. Oh well, we've got a chop of due here in 20 minutes. Um, we've got a bit of a case of the old last day pack up blues. It's been one of those trips that I've been looking forward to for months and planning for months and bloody thinking about every day. And now it's come to an end. But shit, what a epic adventure we've had. Um, I probably couldn't have asked for anything more to be honest, some of the um, the action and everything that's been going on and the weather and it's just been just been great, Fjordan's definitely delivered for us so um, yeah and no, I really hope you guys have been, enjoyed the video and come along on our adventure and um, yeah it's been bloody awesome. <laughs>